Hello everybody, welcome to another edition of Magic Mics, proudly sponsored by our Patreon supporters and CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, and our co-sponsor CardHoarder.com, offering the best inventory prices and delivery of cards for Magic Online. I am Evan Irwin, and we get started each week by saying hello to my two co-hosts, Aaron Campbell. What's up, cats and kittens? Ruben Bressler. Hello, my children. You? <laughs> You're looking especially culty today, Ruben. Have you made I any fresh very... batches of Kool-Aid, sir? <laughs> That's right. I got a new caftan in the mail, and a so I'm just wearing it. Caftan? I have right. no I idea. Caftan. That just well, sounds like a, a weird, is that a weird robe? Listen, is that what they call it? I'm giving the people what they want, which mm-hmm. is a little bit of, you know, a little bit of the, the deep V. Some of the Bresslers um, got it. Some uh-huh. of the Bresslers, yeah. <laughs> yep. showing, the, showing off the Bresslers. And, uh, yeah, it's very comfortable. And so if you want to join my cult, uh, meet me uh, down by the river. <laughs> wow. Goodness gracious. Well, uh, we also begin with our first pick and our giveaway $50 gift certificate to CoolStuffInc.com. Also, Zendikar swag, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. May I bite my tongue over saying Wizards never sent us cool things because here is cool things. We have I wanted this a so Zendikar. Bad. Yeah, this thing is cool. It's like a, it's like a Zendikar kind of handkerchief looking thing. A bandana, yeah, yeah. bandana, sure. Uh, and this thing, my fat head cannot use a mask this small. So maybe you're really, it's yeah. quite small. Okay. Oh, it's it's comical. Me trying to put shout that out on. to the big head bitches. I'm with you. Go. Uh, a sweet, cool water bottle with the now, water ladies. bottle that looks like a flask. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. That's a, or a canteen. Right, right. Canteen. And of course, you'll have your announcement uh, postcard as well. Love it. So, nice. so this is dope. It also goes to the winner, and it can go anywhere in the world because whatever, I will ship it to you in this box. Wow. And if All I have right. any Magic Mike stuff Thank around here, I'll throw some. Make sure to make him mail it to Antarctica, so he has to pay a million dollars. <laughs> yes, in shipping. please make me spend millions. <laughs> yes. That said, uh, you put exclamation mark raffle in the chat, but if you subscribe first, you get two chances to win. Use those Bezos bucks. It's also September, so uh, September. subs are at a bit of a discount this month. That's right. Shout out to all the subs out there. Wow. And, yeah, we would certainly appreciate that. And mm-hmm. we, But we do get to get started here with our exclusive preview which we didn't even know we had until two days ago. Thanks, Evan. You yeah, know, a man of- misses an email. <laughs> so, man. fun story. I have Miss to tell the story before we reveal the card. So, um, Monday Monday morning, the post comes out from Wizards um, with the list of all the creators that you can expect previews from. And it's a calendar. Mm-hmm. To my knowledge, we didn't have a card. So I look at this list and I see Magic Mike's on there. And so I message Evan and I was like, so do I get to see the preview card? Like, I don't know if they're plotting a coup. I don't know if I'm off the show. I don't know what's going on. Or if Evan's just keeping it for himself. Exactly. And Evan goes, what preview card? Right. He's had it in his inbox since the 21st. Like. It's getting, it's getting, yeah. Love we complained. Guys. We complained last week. It was like, oh, woe is us. Wizards doesn't love us anymore. Wizards didn't send us handkerchiefs and canteens or give us a preview card. And here we got Deep, handkerchiefs, crying canteen. emoji, and here we have everything. And now we look like petty, petty children. We are the pettiest, <laughs> most ungrateful. I swear oh, to God. My God. But regardless, but and nevertheless, we thank send the same to you. Of the coast. Thank you. Our card is sweet. All right. Hashtag sponsored. Hashtag free preview. That's uh, right. From Wizards of the coast. Hashtag start the timer on getting to mythic spoiler. Ooh. Right. Or are we now. doing mythic spoilers? Did anybody tweet this that the show's live? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Ruben, did we tweet that the show was live? Okay, we tweeted. I don't see anything live. recent. I well, have, it, I let have me tell a 15 you. minute and a two hour. Here, you tweet it again. You normally do it when we go live. Okay, okay, okay. Right. The point is that this preview card is sweet. I know, right? Some people's children. All I'm saying is that this preview card is really awesome for a common. Yeah. What mm-hmm. this thing does for what? It, can I tell you that for a two mana spell will destroy target land? That's the first sentence on this mm-hmm. card. I just, mwah, I love it. Let's take a look officially. At Cleansing Wildfire. Cleansing Wildfire is a red and a generic mana for a common sorcery that says destroy target land. Its controller may search their library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle their library, draw a card. Yeah. Uh, So this is two mana land destruction that's going to be modern legal. Um, Mm -hmm. We haven't seen anything like that since. I mean, Ghost Quarter is a thing, and, you know, Field of Ruin costs two, but you need the the Field of Ruin with it. I mean, Tron is still very much a thing in modern, both Mono Green Tron and Eldrazi Tron. 
Uh, the Red Prowess decks are very, very popular in Modern right now. Mm-hmm. Burn will always be a fixture in Modern. Um, you know, I absolutely expect this to see Modern play at the very least. And, you know, it has those special three words of draw a card that can turn a card that would normally not be very good into an absolute powerhouse. This gets yeah. rid of all the Tron lands and Popper. Go home, go get your forest, and take your mine <laughs> and your tower and whatever, and go home. This is insane. This mm-hmm. card is terrific for the prowess decks. It's exactly what you want it to do. Mm-hmm. It's exactly the mana cost. You're there with super low, just two mana. Even in Legacy, it's a two mana card that draws you a card while right. also messing up their mana base. Like, that's mm-hmm. incredible. With yeah. all of the uh, prowess decks that are seeing play all over the place, like Legacy and Modern, this also seems like a pretty good shoe-in for those decks. Not just taking care of Tron Lands, but also Valakut, uh, Field of the Dead, in whatever formats though that's still legal in. Mm-hmm. Uh, much less, even just in Legacy, sometimes this would just be a Stone Rain that draws a card. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a, there's a non-zero number of decks that run no basics, or yeah. w- have previous to this card existing. Yeah, and people in chat are coming up with all sorts of neat corner case uses. Of course, you can target yourself, you know, possibly get another landfall trigger. You can be a real monster and pair this with, like, Leon and Arbiter so that they can't go get that other land. Um, you know, all sorts of, you know, fair and busted things you can do There's with this card. There's the new colorless and a blue enchantment uh, I- that whenever they get the second land of a turn, they have to return it to their hand. Um, That'd be a little tricky to catch them with because it's a sorcery, but sure. Regardless, I mean, if they have a fetch land or something. Then right, you know, I mean, like a... that's a nice Mishra's workshop you got there. Let me draw right. a card and say go. Like, yep, that's a good one. That's pretty incredible. So this card is dope. This card is going to be hugely impactful. Had I forgotten that it was in my inbox for a while, yes. Sorry. By the way, a while, seven days. <laughs> this is also the image that was in the very first trailer the very first teaser for zendikar rising was this flower with the land yeah. falling mm-hmm. in the background and we sort of have the cover of the album which is very cool absolutely yeah. so if someone casts something dumb on your lands bam you can destroy your own land and get your own landfall trigger and draw a card i mean it's, it's all the good things it's all the wonderful things of course thanks wizards of the coast for hashtag free preview hashtag sponsored hashtag good stuff yep. i love it it's great thank you thank you very much so Moving here to Gather the Townsfolk, Mother of God, was there an announcement yesterday? So many announcements. Look, we've seen Wizards do it every which way. They've done it by quarters. They've tried to do it with surprise releases. They've tried to do it with, like, entire half years. They've tried to do it now with full years. At this point, I would just say that the preview stream game has gotten so, so much better. Thanks to Jimmy Wong. Thank you so yeah. much, Jimmy, for what you do. Right. Like to, for where they have gone from even a year, two years ago. If you look at their like sort of reveal, you know, set trailer things plus whatever, he brings so much sort of life and exuberance, and you know his stage presence is so great. And Becca Scott also does a great job. You know, they have really elevated that whole time. I was entertained. I enjoyed it. Yes, there were a couple of rough bits, but it never came from the hosts, and they right. did yeah. fantastic. Yeah, some people on Twitter said they felt like they were watching like a Nickelodeon show just with yep. how, you know, kind of campy and fun right. it was. And, and yep. you know, they felt very, you know, glued to their screens. They couldn't wait to see what was going to happen next. Yeah, the the um, you get you get that professional sheen uh, mm-hmm. when you get Jimmy and Becca. Mm-hmm. Um, they're just like so polished and so good at what they do. And it's really nice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so they started by revealing the official trailer for Zendikar Rising. Mm hmm. I'm not a huge fan of the trailer. Mm, Um, I felt like particularly Nahiri's face looked a little rebooty, a little 1990s rebooty. If you ever Mm -hmm. seen that show, reboot, little rough. It was a little, it was a little rough for me, and that that hurt me a little bit. And I was like, "Mm." (laughs) yeah, she's gone through a couple changes in in recent portrayals. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. rest in peace, Akiri. Uh, popular character Akiri uh, mm-hmm. from uh, you know the, the commander uh, card. Yeah. Um, she gets pushed off the ledge by Nahiri. Um, we know that Nahiri is after something, and yep. um, you know there's a lot going on so far. You know we know that I think the trailer did a good job of, of bringing up party. You know we see Nahiri yep. appearing to work with people for a goal. Uh, mm-hmm. We know that she's after some item that she believes is going to heal Zendikar to what degree. I'm sure we'll find out. Um, it was fine. Um, I felt yeah. like it was very safe. It yes. didn't like sure. it didn't sway Nahiri too far towards a villain role. She obviously wasn't a hero, but it was just kind of right in the middle. Yeah. I appreciate that it was kind of story based. You know, like mm-hmm. the the Theros one was just like 
whatever. Like, mm-hmm. I had no idea what the story was right. exactly there. Uh, Ikoria was sort of like a fun moment between the monsters, right? And right. that was neat. Um, I was waiting for the song to come in. I was like, what? Because they'd been using yeah. popular yeah. songs for a while, and I was like, what are we? Yeah. What are we getting with this? You know, right? Well, we, got, no, we got straight old no, storyline uh, this time. I can't take my eyes off of you for this time. Around. <laughs> it's true, uh, but o- overall, I thought it was fine. I just, I didn't, I wasn't a huge fan of, of okay. kind of where they took the characters. But I it was fine. I mean, right. safe is the word. Safe um, is definitely the word. Mm-hmm. As safe as you can be, miles above the surface of the <laughs> earth, shoving your friends off of them. It was yeah. like it was solidly in the middle. Mm-hmm. It did everything it needed to do, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna blow people away mm-hmm. like the throne trailer did or the war of the spark trailer did it was fine Mm -hmm. so uh a lot to unpack here so let's try to keep going a little bit at a time right one of the things we also are not doing the full spoiler breakdown because we got too much news we got there's that next week right next week we'll talk about individual cards and stuff and we'll talk about some cycles obviously here because it's important but whatever moving on here uh there's something important here the buy a box card for Zendikar Rising is no longer mechanically unique. It is only a foil extended art version of a rare in the set. Right. We don't have the Nexus of Fate problem. It's we so good, too. And it's very good, and it's fun and interesting, so that's cool, so people can get those kind of unique versions of cards. Um, the debate has gone back and forth, right? You know, Wizards used to do buy a box of rares in the set, and oftentimes people just ignored it or thought it was pointless. This time, at least they have a treatment you know, quote unquote, that they can give it. Uh, mm-hmm. I, for one, would have expected them to maybe go a little bit further with the foil etched treatment, or maybe the ones in the future are foil etched to give them a sort of a super blingy feel. You know, like these are cool, yeah. this is fine, but you kind of doing what you're doing on box toppers. But Commander Legends kind of kicks it in another gear, give us some foil etching, maybe. I don't know. The point is, we're not going to have any more Nexus of Fate issues where the only way you could have gotten that card is if you bought a box at the time. And even if there were tons more copies of Nexus of Fate than people kind of realized, the market doesn't really care about like what the actual you know amount of supply is. Okay. It only cares about the demand, and it's going to yeah. go. It's going to reach the price to the demand, and that's what it was. Um, and so people thought it was very rare, so it was very rare, you know. And that's how it works. It uh, is up on Mythic Spoiler, by the way. Oh, yeah, well I heard it took ninety seconds. Good job, guys. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Um, all right, so let's move on here to a little bit about uh, Zendikar itself, which is the double-faced modal cards, the oh DFMCs or whatever. These things are incredible. It's <laughs> I I was not expecting an entire rare cycle to be spoiled. Where yeah. it's literally land <clears throat> for one color on one side, yep. land for the other color on the other side, no drawback. You just yep. choose your side. That's, That's incredible. Crazy. I'm going to get these up on the screen. You guys go ahead and tell me what you thought about them. Yeah, so this is, I mean, obviously a uh, mechanically unique take on the dual lands. They needed to do something special and something land-centric when going back to Zendikar, and this certainly qualifies Um, Double face cards have been a rousing success, uh, to the surprise of some, probably. And so all of the pathways, the pathway cycle, uh, are essentially start on, you know, you can choose a side to be the color you need. So your first, let's say, clear water pathway can be blue, and then the back side of murk water pathway, if you have two of those pathways in your opening hand, well, guess what? You have both of the colors of mana. Um, that is incredible. Um... And the three color decks that have 12 pathways or 16 pathways oh are going God. to be confusing, to say <laughs> the least. Um, but the, uh, the checklist cards for them are also uh, quite uh, easy to read. And so I'm very excited for, for this cycle. I think it's great. Yeah, when I first saw them, my mind immediately went to life from the loam. And I was like, <gasps> I was like, can I dredge spells? And then people were like, mm-mm. They're like, it, it, there's a lot of rules, interactions, and clarifications that have gone out regarding these cards. And uh, whatever it is on the front side, that's what it's going to be. So right. if this card ends up in your graveyard, it will be a spell. You can't bring it back with life from the loam. Um, you know, and you, so you can't do anything with that. It has to be a spell. Um, right. So that was that was a bit of a rain my parade but right. um the cards well, do seem ways the pathways are lands on both sides right but it's only going to be the topmost land when it's in your graveyard right so they note here that there are six pathway lands there's not the full 10 land cycle for all the different pairs they actually kind of pick and chose which ones they wanted there's green and white there's black and white there's black and blue there's red and green there's uh red and white and there's red and blue now they did note that they are going to make the rest of the pathways sooner than later 
So, A, that to me says this is definitely not the last time we're going to see double-faced modal cards. This is an oh, yeah. amazing thing. Super like awesome in choices. Great for digital. It's, I'm expecting it to be fantastic for gameplay. Uh, yeah, so that, that's, that sort of says what that says to me, essentially, is that they like this enough that they've promised that they're going to make the rest of this cycle at some point. Um, but the rest of it is that, you know, these things are going to be incredibly sweet and awesome. I've got some of the preview cards up on the screen uh, where we see the basic lands, which are awesome. And here we get to the Expeditions. Those are fetch lands on the screen right now. Yeah, I'm sorry. I got confused. You were talking about something. I thought you meant the spell that was like a spell and a land. That's not a pathway. Oh, no. I was just talking about the pathway lands. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which are all so much to So much to take in. I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, yeah. We're, we're keeping going. <laughs> so the expeditions in a nutshell, the box toppers are going to be one of 30 cards. Ten of those are fetch lands and they're in awesome new treatments and they're gorgeous they all have different set symbols so they're not going to be a part of standard of course but that's fine because right. who doesn't love a fetch land now collector booster boxes are going to have two non-foil box toppers inside of that box but if you want foil fetch lands foil expedition lands you're going to need to buy the collector booster as it's in one of the ancillary slots in the collector booster. Right. That's how you're going to find the foil fetch lands. So, so this is an interesting tie bet to to settle here because Aaron said fetch lands will appear in booster packs of Zendikar Rising. Which is no, I think I said they had to be standard legal. Does anyone have oh, a clip? Standard, did you say standard legal? I don't know. There's a somebody clipped it, so we just have to yeah, find. We'd, uh, we'd have to go if because if you said that they were going to be in booster packs of Zendikar Rising, you're technically not wrong. <laughs> but if you said standard legal, <laughs> we'll then, need to then review the fine print. Well, we'll take a look at that. But regardless, um, let's keep moving here. But the expedition lands again. There are the ten fetch lands, which look absolutely gorgeous. But there's twenty other slots, and those. Uh, clearly at least five of them are the battle uh, bond lands of yep. the multiple player lands like, such as Morphic Pool here which enters the battlefield tap unless you have two or more opponents and it taps for black or blue that yep. whole cycle appears in there Wasteland Prismatic Vista has been shown <laughs> so far uh, Cavern of Souls oh my that god Wasteland Cavern of Souls beautiful yeah, yeah. absolutely <clears throat> incredible um, and of course from the set boosters as we move on here they have a card from the list, the magical list, and they have revealed three more cards on it, including the first ever reprint of Food Chain, if I am not mistaken. Nice. Which is uh, a very not uh, inexpensive card. Yeah. For for its time, uh, that is a seventy dollar rare right now. Jeez. So, but then again, you have Seaman Spirit Guy, a couple of dollar in common, and you have Sto- <laughs> Slime for the Stowaway, who's great, but it, you know it's worth like ten cents or whatever. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so you're going to very but wildly he's also beloved, you know. Oh yeah, yeah but twenty five percent of the time you're going to get something going on from the list, and mm-hmm. that list is looking pretty damn sweet. I'm also so looking far. at just the regular full art basics, gorgeous. Like, yeah. oh my god, I want them all. Mm-hmm. I I really like. The, how they've made Zendikar th- the two things they needed to do was they needed to make Zendikar Adventure World which I think mm-hmm. they've done they've I think done they did very a pretty well. good job well. we'll talk more about party and we'll talk more about like the mechanics uh, of that mm-hmm. uh, later but I feel like the adventurousness of Zendikar certainly more than the previous time we visited Zendikar um, we there we still want traps. We still want you know some other temple running kind of stuff. But it, they there this seems to be a good place to start. The other thing about Zendikar is lands, 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 <laughs> and I think that that has certainly come through. Yes, and uh, we'll talk about the mechanics here probably just in a minute. But we got to kind of cover the rest of the stuff that Wizards <laughs> so talked stuff, about. Right. It is absolutely a lot. Uh, Wizards has never in my, uh, at least as I can recall, I don't believe they've ever announced stuff this far out. They've talked about stuff like six months, maybe uh, maybe even almost eight months, but we're talking a full year's worth of yeah. set releases yep. that are coming out, which is pretty incredible. Um, the the so We talked about, of course, um, there's Zenicar Rising coming soon, but we're going to be in Kaldheim next Viking winter land, yeah. for Viking Land. That's going to be awesome. Uh, then we're going to be in uh, Strixhaven, which I'm people sorry. are no clue what that strict is. Strixhaven. We'll back up yeah. two seconds. Then we go to Time Spiral Remastered. There we go. Right. The first paper remastered set, which, by yes. the way, 
Did they really have to tell us that Magic Online could do Time Spiral? Well, no, but they did have to say that it was going to be paper because a lot of people assume because they've done remaster sets as right. Magic Online only. Oh, I know. And yes. so I know a lot of people were like, "Is this just the Magic Online thing?" And so he needed to say it was paper for sure. Right. But the other th- the other thing was also thought as well, which is, "Oh, it's paper. Is it not coming to online?" And Magic Online's like, "Yeah, we're going to have it." And I'm like, "You've already got every card in the system. <laughs> right. They're already there. What yeah. are you talking about?" Anyway, that was funny. so. So Time Spiral Remastered is going to come. That's going to be really interesting. Um, Strixhaven is going to be essentially our Harry Potter in Magic. It is the yep. School oh, of Mages. Okay. Some people are yeah. uh, thinking that Kazmina, that one blue planeswalker that we saw from War of the Spark, mm-hmm. uh, was just that, that she may figure prominently in that one. Sure. But that's that to me definitely says Harry Potter. Uh, but my lord, Ruben, you got to tell us about the next release after that. That replaces the core set. We've been waiting so long. So I know. We've been long. we've been waiting since before we started doing this show. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. For uh the D and D MTG crossovers. Mm-hmm. I moved to Los Angeles in large part because of a MTG D and D crossover. Mm. Um and now we and but bridges go both ways, which now we get uh, Adventures in the Forgotten Realms next summer, which I am terribly excited for. Finally, Magic Missile, probably, one assumes, on a Magic card. Oh, wow. Beholders on a Magic card. Oh. Mimics yes. on a non-silver bordered Can Magic card. Can we get the card. flares that like, have the... Mind the, flares, the, yeah, yes. octopus face, for the sure. Absolutely. We're going to get yeah. the dragons and what their colors like mean yep. in D&D and stuff. Ancient red dragons. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we'll get uh, the return of kobolds, maybe. Um, oh, that'd be cool. We'll, we'll get legendary lands like Waterdeep and Baldur's Gate. Oh, it's going to be so <laughs> sick! So, yeah, I mean, every, Oh, my you know, God, we've been waiting so long. I remember, like, man, I've been talking about this for a good 12 years at least. I remember having so many conversations. I can tell you, like, thanks to experience, and I've been doing this forever, I can tell you that there was definitely a time in Wizards in which D&D was over here and Magic was over here, and don't even think yeah, about crossing the, the stream. Yeah. Uh-uh. Fourth edition was like not fourth. There was a uh, yeah. It was fourth edition was the one that was like super embarrassing and it failed and it tanked. Right. And during all of that, it was like you do not get near the golden child. Oh mm-hmm. no, magic makes us money. D and D currently makes us embarrassed. And see, then they <laughs> right. fix that and it's no longer embarrassing. It's awesome and mm-hmm. everybody loves it. Sales figures it's are through cool the roof. Now. Absolutely, yeah. With magic now has their own books. Has multiple books. Yep. We go the other way, and I can't wait for it. We've been waiting so long. This is going to be spectacular. Oh, my God. I am so pumped. I cannot explain. So that's awesome. But we're not done, because then they're going to be releasing Modern Horizons 2, in which they have promised the enemy fetch lands are going to be into the draft boosters of Modern Horizons 2. Modern Horizons 2 is particularly noteworthy because it sounds like they drafted a couple of pros. Uh, Brian Brown Nguyen said that he had done mm-hmm. some advising or some consulting on that one and Sam Black also said that he had a role in its development yeah. and so um, I'm excited to see what that means, you know, taking people who love modern, who are known for being modern players um, and having them consult on that set. Um, you know, Modern Horizons certainly left its impact on multiple formats and so I'm anxious to see if they continue that trend or if they kind of rein it in a little bit and right. they brought these guys in to help do that you know 11 mana hogak that's all yeah <laughs> i mean like tom ross was in the development team of the first one yeah, yeah i understand but think about it. i mean hogak force of vigor force of negation oh yeah um, uh, i mean just ultra dementia even like look wait, what wait. that did just see Aaron, this was the set you said would have no impact um, <laughs> this was Modern, commander I we look I, I mean i i can admit when i'm wrong you know <laughs> Urza being a tier one deck. People are paying four mana for Urza in this economy. Like, and Ruben and I are, we were going like, Art, could you see this? I and you're like, Coatl, Dead of Winters, he's playing Legacy. I mean, yep. Arkham's uh, Astrolabe, huge impact. Oh, Lord, yes, absolutely. So, <laughs> Modern Horizons 2, going to be huge. The fact that it has fetch lands already is going to put it into a yeah. winner category. Uh, and then we have... Innistrad Werewolves and Innistrad Vampires. Now, this is not the names of the sets. They said those are going to be changing or revealed later. But it's going to say, we're getting two Innistrad sets. Right. One all about to werewolves, team one all about Jacob vampires. and Team Edward. I'm interested how they're going to do this because you do literally have the Eldrazi in the moon. Like, how are you going to? You know, you can you can get around that on Zendikar because they're not there anymore. You know, they mm-hmm. they've left or they've been defeated, so they're they're not in the picture. But I don't know how you can have an Innistrad set where she's literally in the moon and not touch on that. I Maybe hope they do because I like Emrakul, but yeah. 
Maybe it's flashback. Maybe it's before that happened. Or far in the future after it's been hand waved away. Okay. Like some other timeline. And there was also someone on Twitter who was just like calling it right now. They're going to do uh, the the vampire set on one side of the cards and the werewolf set on the other side of the cards. And I was like, Ooh. that is insane. That is crazy. That yeah. is crazy pants and sounds. No, no, don't. And I also, don't you're going to have an image track with no zombies? Like, what are you doing? I'm sure they're No, the in zombies there. will be everywhere. No, yeah. zombies, the zombies will be, in will both be there. Sets. Gotta be, yeah. gotta be. Yeah. And the but I'll, I'll take awesome vampires and awesome werewolves, the yeah. sets. Yes, yeah. thank you. Whew. All right, so that was the 2021 release schedule, which in and of itself will be interesting. Uh, they say the timing on the Innistrad sets, uh, the, someone says, I mean, two standard sets in quarter four. They said the sets yeah. will be spaced out during the fall and early winter, right. but we don't have any additional details to share at this time. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like there's going to be a small, like a tiny set, tiny set. And it'll combine together to be one set. Probably. Maybe I mean they said it was there were two full blown sets, whatever that exactly means. Okay. All right, cool. So let's bounce back to some details that we didn't talk about exactly. For example, in Time Spiral Remastered, there is going to have the old frame oh, yes. for cards. Check this out, Lord Almighty! This Chalice of the Void is. Oh, yeah. Mm. I love when Gavin is on Good Morning Magic and he's just like, guys, wait, just wait. I know. I know. I know you want Oubliette. I know you want old bordered cards. I know you want enemy fetch lands. Just wait. Uh -huh. He did it. Wait a second. Gavin Verhe, the lead architect on Time Spiral Remastered. And it's crazy. It just, it still blows my mind because I have been making this stuff. I've been talking about magic professionally for so long. I can tell yeah. you where Wizards was like, Time Spiral was a mistake. Planarum Chaos was a disaster. Like Future Sight screwed up everything. It was too complex. Players hated it. No one got the jokes. No one understood the references. And now it's just like... You remember what Time Spiral was awesome, right? <laughs> right, right. And I'm like, I loved it at the time. I just, it cracks me up that this yeah. narrative has just completely shifted into yeah. wasn't that one of the best sets right. ever? And I'm like, yeah. well, it's perfect for a remastered because the people that Time Spiral brought were the old players. It was mm -hmm. like, hey, remember this? Remember oh, this? Yeah. Remember this? And bringing all those old players back, and the failure, quote unquote, was bringing in new players. Mm -hmm. You don't have that worry with remastered. Yeah. Right. Remastered is all about bringing old players back. And I can say that as somebody who plays Legacy and Vintage and hangs out in those circles, that has been a disqualifying factor. Where you know there are these guys and girls that love these new cards, but they're like, "Oh, I hate that frame." And I'm telling you, if you just gave them an old frame, they would absolutely buy your stuff. Right. And here we are, and they've like signed an old that. frame Path to Exile. Yeah, Path to Exile has been, and this Chalice is amazing. The chalice and is unreal. Like yeah. this thing in foil is going to be incredible. Like I'm, I am super. The pumped. dark brown star foils are Ooh. so good. Oof, mm -hmm. and the foils are going to have the shooting star. Oh, so good! <laughs> I am pumped. That is going to be amazing. Um, so that's sweet, and it's going to be on Moto as we discussed. Um, Modern Horizons Two is expected to cost as much as Modern Horizons One. That would be sure. the. It's not a Masters level cost. It's not a draft booster and standard cost. It's Somewhere in between. It's like eight dollars, sure. seven or eight bucks, or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, which is a thing. Let's see here. So uh, the set of Zendikar Rising itself. Back up here, just a minute. Uh, so we talked a minute about. Uh, well, Landfall coming back. A, it's my favorite mechanic of all time. I'm so stoked. Uh, they moved Step Links into Red. Also stoked about that. There's a Fetch Land Standard. Maybe it's not the greatest one of all time, but we got one. So right. that's great. Lotus Cobra coming back. That's fun. Um, yeah, like Landfall is back. We're all very excited about Landfall. Yes. Now that oh, lands yeah, are spells. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh my it's God. Great. I mean, the fact that you can play uh, as many or as few. I mean, I'm, there's. I cannot imagine a world. Where I pick a magic card in this draft environment, it doesn't have a land on the back of it before any other card. Yeah, like, before literally I, any other card. I can I mean, play we're close. 30 spells and 22 lands in my limited decks if I get, like, the, the business. Like, that's insane. Yeah. Every opening hand is going to have four lands and five spells in it. That's unreal. Yeah, that's like this Amiria's called. Just to point one out here. This is a mythic land. It, uh, as the, it's a mythic land. As Amiria Shattered Skyclave enters the battlefield, you may pay three life. If you don't, it enters the battlefield tapped. It taps to add a white mana. But the other side is three white, four generic mana for a mythic sorcery that says create two, four, four white angel warrior creature tokens with flying. Non-angel creatures you control gain indestructible until your next turn. That's not an amazing 
finisher spell. It's at sorcery speed. You're not going to get to take advantage yeah. much of the indestructible. I'm guessing it may be seven mana on a sorcery somewhere. But it's basically saying you have these four planes that are now awesome big spells because you don't want a, a ninth land or a tenth land. You want to do something with it. And this lets you do something with it. Mm. Yep. The, the, the tap guy, the mana dork that's also taps for a green, like, <laughs> oh, oh my god, god that I card is that so good. People were really excited so about the regrowth, too. too, where it's like yeah, a regrowth or a green excellent. that Huey Jensen spoiled. People were yeah. like, holy crap. It's, oh, a three mana, it's a three mana regrowth or a land. Yeah, that card's unreal as well. Really? This I'm, Baba Ged recovery? Yeah. And that's card. Ooh. It, I was going to say, that's target card from your graveyard. Yeah, For three yeah. mana, maybe I mean, they push all, regrowth one great. mana. It's like, even the six, the six mana overcosted creature yeah. is fine. It would be in every limited red deck I have <laughs> yeah. ever played in my life. Like, yeah. it is amazing. Like, one of the reasons that the World Wake man lands were so incredible is that your mana base were your threats. Well, now your threats can literally be part of your mana base as part yeah. of the design of the set, not just five cards. Yeah. Like, what, 40 or something? 40 plus? Like, it's going to be insane. Yeah. I am pumped, pumped, pumped for it. this design. Uh, and the other design that we talked about, or the mechanic, was Party. Party is really interesting. Ruben, tell us about Party being the D&D so, of us. Party is a mechanic that gathers the four main archetypes of a Dungeons & Dragons party, which is, of course, your cleric for heals, your rogue for DPS, in a language that Aaron can speak there, your warriors, <laughs> warrior for your tanks, and, of course, your wizard for battlefield control and spell casting. And depending on uh, how many of those or how few of those you have in play, you get different levels of effects. Um, sometimes spells will cost less for each one. Sometimes a spell will deal more damage for each one. Sometimes you need to have them all in play in order to do something. Um, and uh, yeah, so it, I, I think that it's an it's a interesting ability. I, I did not think we would get to this point. I did not think that party... Like, you could have let me design magic cards for a long time, and I would not have gotten to designing party. This is a very clever, interesting way to do creature types without requiring changeling, for example. Without requiring lords, for example. And changeling so also I doesn't play well with this. I think they said changeling only covers one of the bases. So you, changeling you get, can't a, be you get a wild card. Yeah. Right, it yeah. counts as one. I don't like yeah. party. I, Why did you like so party? I want to go back to I want to go back to a point that you made. You know, Ruben, you were talking about how you know between the trailer and everything that you know you felt like we were getting a taste of the adventure of Zendikar again. And I disagree. I feel like everything we've seen, it's giving you an adventure for sure. It's just not necessarily giving me Zendikar. Like, you know, we have Kicker and we have Landfall, which to me feels very Zendikar and I'm very excited about those things. But I just feel like it could be any adventure world. Like, I feel like I'm not getting enough. Uh, and, and that's something that we were promised. You know, when Mara was talking about what went wrong with Battle for Zendikar, he was like, you know, we thought we knew what people wanted. We thought they wanted Eldrazi and we didn't give them Zendikar. And I thought sure. that we would be seeing expeditions or we would be seeing the trap cards or we would be seeing, you Where's know, things quests? like... Where's the quest? Right. For real. Right. Quests? And so, so, you know, and, and now there's like a weird equipment sub theme. There's, um, there's this, and they're not bad. I just don't think they're necessarily Zendikar. I'm not, I'm not getting enough Zendikar from all of this. That's sure. all. I see. I think that party is an upgrade on allies. Uh, allies was always weird to me, um, so I'm I'm happy with it. I think I agree. I do want more traps. I do want more. I want quests you know, back. I, I think quests were great. Things, but we're yeah. also getting dungeon. And dragons next summer. So, right. so again, like Thwart the Grave. If Thwart the Grave doesn't, you know, flood the basement for Aaron, it's just not gonna right now. Which is <laughs> two black for generic mana for an uncommon sorcery. It costs one less for each ca creature in your party, which is the cleric, rogue, warrior, that wizard. Requires me to play creatures. <laughs> it's true, but you return target creature card and up to one target cleric, rogue, warrior, or wizard creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So it's almost a double zombify that makes it a lot cheaper if you but have your party. But it involves a lot of setup, though. You have to. You have That's to. True. Bring, you have to acknowledge that we're sure. we're in magical Christmas land where no one has touched any of our creatures or done anything to us. I understand. <laughs> I mean, but, we can also just get to six mana and you know and just play it and get our two six creatures. Man, happy for with. six mana, I better get dinner, a back rub, and a ride home. Do you know what I'm saying? Like goodness gracious. I'm just saying. All right. Well, I mean, you can self mill yourself. I think. That <laughs> creatures, 
<laughs> well, two things. One, I think party is probably a terrific mechanic. And two, I am very, at least I feel fairly confident that party was locked into Zendikar Rising before they said we're making the D&D &D set. I agree. Because how could that design team not immediately yank party and yeah. have that be part of the set? I don't know. Uh, but maybe they'll bring it back like we talked about. All right. So moving on here. Web fiction is coming back officially. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. The this idea would have been the number one story most weeks. It's true. It would have been the number one with a bullet. We've talked about it. We've moaned. We've complained. We've seen the ebooks. We've seen the published books. We've seen more ebooks. We've seen ebooks that don't go along with what the cards had or cards that don't yeah. go along with what the ebooks had. We've had decidedly mail happen. All sorts of things have gone. It is, and it is back. And like, it's back. As of today. Yes. Uh, episode today. one in the Heart of the Sky Clave. So this talks about Nahiri um, being on the hunt for something, an ancient core relic of some kind. Um, mm -hmm. Along the way, she runs into Nyssa, who's going to be Golgari in this set, which I'm particularly yeah. excited about. Um, and so, you know, Nahiri's kind of talking about, again, this thing that she thinks is going to heal Zendikar. Nyssa realizes that whatever she's looking for is probably going to endanger life. And so, you know, while it will heal the land it's probably going to cost either the lives of elementals or even people um and so you see the two of them you know really dealing with that nissa being a really problematic character in the past and really having to yeah. you know nikki nissa's not so innocent herself and so and that's something that Hiri kind of calls her out on where you know we've both caused harm but let's not do that today let's focus on this thing and so um you know nissa then going to get jace when she realizes what nahiri's trying to do um and nahiri not really you know like we mentioned earlier not really swinging too far towards the villain role you know she wants to heal zendikar her um her um intentions seem to be good um but at what cost and so right. i think this is a really good start for a story i saw some really good debate happening on twitter between the vorthoses um and i'm really excited to see what they do with both of these characters absolutely so we have a story back in magic a weekly published story i'm very happy about that like I'll we'll just chalk it up to experiments, right? Like yep. they tried something new and different, and we should be back to our web stories because that's yep. where we like them. And we also <laughs> get Voice of All back, which is a a, a very nice bonus uh, yes. on top of that, which I'm I'm very ha thankful for. Yeah, very cool. Because um, and they do the the voice they acted do the, versions. The voice acted versions of the magic stories. Yes, absolutely. Uh, which I think we've all three been a part of at one point. Is yes. that right? Very cool. I was in the unstable one. Um, all right, nice. cool. Moving on here, uh, Wizards is now talking about a new esports lineup slash setup slash uh, <laughs> a lot of changes to pro league play that I cannot possibly summarize no. for you, but I will leave you a nice link. Got some new faces in coverage though. Uh, Amy the Amazonian uh, and Bloody are going to be joining the coverage mm -hmm. team, so that's Good. awesome. That is great. Um, and so you know, always glad to see more women and you know another trans woman breaking through. So Absolutely, it's good to see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I've listened to both of their streams, and they're both extremely good at discussing plays, and they just are well-deserving of an opportunity for this. As I understand it, this is a 100% digital initiative at this point, because, okay. you know, 2020. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, obviously we'll take it. We want to have high-level magic being played. We want to you know, play for the big stakes. We want to have the sweet events. Um, and we'll see how this works, essentially, moving forward. Um, all right, so let's take a look here. Raph Levy, um, actually, let's back up for a second. One of the most important things in that eSports update, let's not bury this lead, is an all-new Magic the Gathering Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah. Right. We it's ain't talking Pro Tour Hall of Fame, which, seriously, those semantics made me insane. <laughs> but whatever. So as they have seriously, like, look, it's... I like this, right? I like this. But I do not like how they just take 25 years of history and just, like, take a big eraser and just scrub all of it out. And now we're going to have different Hall of Famers. Hall of Fame is going to mean something totally different than what it used to mean. Yep. No more automatic invites. No more seeing the old faces back in the events. Yes, we can now talk about including Richard Garfield, for God's sake, in a Magic <laughs> Hall of Fame. You know, that'd be awesome. But, you know, it's just... I hate that we... That what we're losing, while well, also what we're gaining. Yes. Uh, to, to fully explain this here, they're saying they're going to take a year off from inductions to construct a new Hall of Fame. 
One that encompasses not just competitive play, but all of Magic, including its innovators, contributors, and longtime stewards. Like each year's Hall of Fame discussion, we know you'll have thoughts and feedbacks for creating the new look hall, so stay tuned. So. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's disappointing that they're doing this, but I'm not surprised. You know, we've seen this effort from Wizards to kind of erase the past. You know, we saw them right. do away with the DCI numbers. We saw them do away with people's gaming histories. You know, there mm-hmm. does seem to be this this initiative to, you know, set this cutoff point, which largely has to do with, like, arena and digital play, <clears throat> and then to make a lot of things that happened before that just not matter anymore. And so um, I'm not surprised to see this. I am looking forward to seeing uh, who is on this. I know a lot of no worthy people were already brought up on Twitter, like Christine Sprankle, who, you know, single-handedly put Magic Cosplay on the map, let's be honest. Um, you know, Brian David Marshall, obviously, Richard Garfield, obviously, and so uh, I'm anxious to see people who have contributed so much to the Magic community be recognized in this capacity, Absolutely. regardless of how we got here. No, I mean, you know, like, Rosewater needs to be in there. Like, <laughs> yeah. he just needs to. It's never yeah. been a yeah. question. Mm-hmm. No one, the only people who have ever questioned it has been Wizards, which yeah. is always Rashad so weird Miller, to me. even, you know, him, he was really kind of, a, it's my understanding Started. He was the one that really got coverage started, you know? Yeah, and yeah. He got streaming GG's, coverage started for anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. GG's uh, Live. Yeah. GG's I mean, Live. There's, a, there's a list of people who, now that this is a consideration, mm-hmm. now that you can consider this kind of thing, that, that you, we can have this discussion. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I would love to... I mean, we've done a Magic Mike's Top 10 on our favorite, or favorite, our top Hall of Famers. We've done that episode. We could probably do an episode of top 10 people who aren't in the Hall of Fame who could one day or won't ever be or whatever like that. Mm -hmm. Um, Just to give me another opportunity to talk about Kyle Rose. Um, (laughs) But, you know, I think that this is a great, you know, thing that is long overdue. I always thought that it would be a separate hall, but because of the new direction... It literally is. <laughs> and it literally is. Um, but I always, but now because of this new direction Wizards is taking where they sort of don't want the Pro Tour to be the end-all be-all. They want the Pro Tour to exist in contemporaneousness with how just anyone can play Magic, right? Um, in, in a sort of weird way, they want to get rid of that, um, what they perceive, I guess, as like an elitist club. Mm-hmm. Um and, you know, on the one hand, that cool. That's great. That's that's awesome. But it's also erasing a lot of what was already built. Right. It's it's one of those things where it's like you're gonna have a magic hall of fame. Do we have to like we have to put John Finkel back in it, right? We gotta put <laughs> right. Kai back in it. Like how many of those people have to be put back where they already were to start with, which mm-hmm. seems really strange. Yeah. Sure. Um all right. Anyway, moving on here. Speaking of uh, Hall of Famers. Speaking of Hall of Famers, Raphael <laughs> Levy. On yeah. Friday the 4th, in a couple of days now, he's going to be starting a charity stream marathon benefiting No Kid Hungry. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think up to 10 streamers or more now are going to be taking a part of this. Yep, so it's going to um, be him, Alias V, Bloody, Amazonian, The Ham TV, Lord Tupperware, Death Sea, Numat the Nummy, uh, and Just LOL A-Man. As well as Foxy Man, Twitch. Somebody. Um, yeah. And they will be streaming for 45 hours, more than 45 hours of limited um, for a good cause. Foxy Twitch will be joining them as well. I'm sorry if I didn't say her name. Um, and so this seems to be a really good cause. Raph using his platform to uh, help feed some kids. Uh, I grew up poor with a single mom myself, so I appreciate efforts like this. Um, and if you have the time, you know, please watch them. And if you have a couple bucks to spare, consider tossing some their way. Yeah, and the idea of going from bronze to mythic using a uh, wizard's account, I can imagine they're giving him whatever the gems or whatever right. he needs to use it. That's amazing. Like, yep, to see cool someone idea. run from literal the bottom to the top, mm-hmm. like, that's awesome. And you're going to yeah. see it with somebody as good as Rap Levy. Like, he's going to get there. Yeah, yeah I, I believe This it. style of stream has always been pretty popular in the Hearthstone community, mm-hmm. um, where you, like, try to be the first one to hit legend every month or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so to see something like this put forward into to a charity... Uh, um, event is mm-hmm. is very cool so we had uh called this out a bit earlier but i wanted to put another highlight on it just for a second here uh there is going to be a mythic invitational soon i'm not exactly sure when wizards <laughs> anybody, please please market know? this event to me so i know <laughs> when it is but uh, oh my god it's right on the image it's uh you're they're marketing to me well thank you uh the <laughs> mythic invitational broadcast team on in september 10th through 13th so that's next week live on twitch.tv slash magic uh, is going to include we lots and lots of friends. This. I know, but what I'm saying, we didn't mention Corey Baumeister, Brad Nelson's right. little brother, 
this kid I met way back in the day who was a gigantic Magic Show fan who still brings up the Magic Show and how much he loved it and influenced him. And it's like it's so great to see that he's come so far yeah. making content. He's here in the official coverage team. He's worked hard at it like yeah. this is something he's wanted and actively put it's effort into shot. and now he's got yeah. it. So high good five. Headshot. He's he's such Great a headshot. good energetic part of the of the community. Uh, I've had lots of conversations with Corey about mm-hmm. becoming a content creator back before he was a, con- a full time content creator. Mm-hmm. Um, and he does have the passion, the drive, the charisma that you need for this. And I'm glad to see that they're uh, giving him another shot. Absolutely. So, uh, and I definitely never say never on more magic uh, magic show episodes. Definitely would not want to do that. But uh, regardless, it was great to see that, and I was very excited about it. All right, coming back to the magic community is Cardboard Crack. I honestly did hey. not know this until I was reading the list of show topics this week. Yeah. This one had passed me by, and I was like, whoa, whoa. You don't say. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> you know, a man misses an email. Seven days. Seven days of email, and we'll never hear about anything else again. All right, look. On your screen right now is a brand new comic from Cardboard Crack, mm-hmm. who had made many, many years of fantastic comics for the community. They were funny, interesting, weird, fantastic. I still remember a bunch of the punchlines on them. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Don't play without protection and pulls out the sleeves. The re-duke one of making her, her boyfriend put the wig on. <laughs> yeah. It was amazing. So, uh, so yeah, the idea of Cardboard Crack making new comics at Cardboard underscore Crack on Twitter. Get mm-hmm. on that. And I am going to be contacting them. Because they're great, and yeah, I want to work with them. Great. Because they're great, <clears throat> yeah. and if they're back, well, by God, I'm also interested. So yep. I'll yeah. have my people. I'll never call forget. Their um, it's a it, it's one man right behind the account. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, he sent me a couple books. Um, as I was kind of you know uh, growing in the community, he was like, "Hey, mm-hmm. big fan of yours. You know, you know, I see you liking my stuff, and I'll, what would you like some books?" And I was like, "Of course." And um, I still had them on my bookshelf, and I still page through them from time to time and I still have my favorite comics I always get tagged in the dredge one or the Reed Duke one and so um, you know and he really was you know one of the first it's my understanding to do comics with magic Um, certainly one of the longest running um, certainly one of the bigger people to do that um, you know and did took some time away to work on other projects worked on his his health um, and he's back and and doing what he loves to do so and we need that right now we need you know just sort of fun silly you know harmless entertainment we need we need carbo crack we need uh, Durfington. We need all the comics folks to uh, to help us through, mm-hmm. these, yeah. through these word we don't say times. That's right. <laughs> these trying times. That's yeah. what they are. All right. So let's bounce over here to Desperate Ravings. Because, <laughs> man, sometimes people step in it. And look, there is one main character on Twitter every day. You don't day. want it to be you. And you don't want it to be you. Yeah. Trust me, me, I speak once. from experience. It's been Evan twice, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I haven't so been far, the right? villain for a while. No, you, but then again, I'm always kind of the villain. Like, right? You always, and also whenever it gets close, you're just like you just shutter the windows and, <laughs> and leave for Done. seventy-two See hours. See you later. We, we wonder. There's like a thirty percent chance that you've just left and moved to Argentina. <laughs> We're literally contacting friends, and or do you know the relatives that we? could call no joke because she has ghosted the planet and she's just gone but yeah i mean it's better than the alternative which is being the main character yeah right so uh the crux of this i guess as you would say the uh, the good intention that yes they did have a screenshot because it is gone now is that uh, Hipsters of the Coast, which is a news organization in Magic, uh, said they're looking to add a junior front or back-end developer to join us as a tech intern. They're working on a lot of cool tech projects that use React and Node and Ruby and AWS and all that stuff that programmers use. And they say women and by uh, POC are especially encouraged to apply. Mm-mm. And then what happened, Aaron? So uh, the, the problem with this and, and what made people so upset is that um, the skills that they were asking for to do this job or to, to fulfill this role um, are, are not everyday skills. You know, these are skills that would normally lead to somebody being paid quite handsomely. Um, and this was, for all intents and purposes, a volunteer position that wasn't being paid. Um, and it's a really sensitive topic, you know, the idea of women uh, or black folks or people of color not being paid what they're due or not being paid at all 
all are being paid in exposure. And so um, oh. this hit on a lot of really sensitive issues, yeah. um, you know, that people were very quick to call out. Um, and it led to um, these tweets being deleted and when hipsters really having to backpedal. Um, you know, and, and I had a lot of mixed feelings on this. You know, when it first happened, I thought it was really overblown. Like, it's obvious that hipsters doesn't have the budget of Card Kingdom or cool stuff or things like that. But right. as I started to take in more opinions, because that's kind of my job being on the show, um, I started to understand where people were coming from in that, you know, if you don't have the money to pay somebody to fulfill this role, then you need to fulfill that role until you have the ability to do that. And, right. you know, it's not like volunteering for a soup kitchen or the Humane Society or a nonprofit. You know, volunteering for a magic website is a little bit strange, especially when you're being asked to, um, you know, provide very in-depth skills like this. It's not a matter of just monitor our Twitter feed. Well, any idiot can do that. But when you're talking about Ruby and things like that, like this is this is something that people have to be uh, fluent serious, in and, right, and web deserve technologies to be compensated for. Yeah. Right. Training and time. And so like I didn't jump into the time because I wanted to have sort of a more nuanced discussion with you guys about it, it reminds me of um, there was a point. It's not quite the same. There was a point where The Daily Show was talking about how they used to hire interns and they hired a lot of unpaid interns for many years. But you're mm -hmm. going to get a certain type of person when you're looking for an unpaid position. That person's probably going to be in a very good spot to work for free and have it not affect them. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're looking for women and, 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 and by people of color, like well, those are people not are making <laughs> BI, BIPOC. The point is like. The point yeah. is that if you're looking for someone who is from, you know, that type of uh, that, that type of area, you're going to have problems. Marginalized yeah. communities don't 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 not pay them. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> That's real bad. Yeah. So that, that just was a serious optics explosion that yeah. ideally never should have happened. Yeah, it was just awkward. So this it was, is it was a noble intention executed extraordinarily poorly. Right. Mm -hmm. And I understand from their point is that they're part of the industry and they know people and they can connect people but they just don't ask you, you know, cash check or uh, exposure at the gas station. Or Chat's losing store. their minds over your fob hot. We're or working with him, I promise. Yeah, like, no, it stands for black indigenous and people of color. I'm sorry. We, we I wasn't barely meaning got by... through the ennui. Like, oh, we're, we're working. You know, like... We're an ennui 2.0 <laughs> here, and that's by POC. It's biracial. It means man, black, it's indigenous, It's in the chat, Evan, please. Like, you're you looking know what? Silly. A man just... can make a mistake. All right, okay, we're moving I'm on here. Saying. We're speaking of smush toppers, okay? We're kind of moving. We're going straight to smush top. This is not pre show. Smush toppers. Hashtag smush toppers. Smush toppers. Give us your smush toppers in the chat. I've had enough smush Woo. toppers for one lifetime. I, I don't. tell you what. Well, Have look. you? <laughs> we sure? Not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, okay, cool. So uh, they, there was a promotion that when you bought the Ultimate Edition Secret Lair that you would get fetch lands on top of one fetch land, you know, per secret lair that you got. Well, some people bought multiples, as you can imagine, and that's nothing wrong with that. But they kind of threw the envelopes just in the yeah. box with the rest of them. There were some really troubling images of, of the envelopes being kind of haphazardly thrown in or being, you know, kind of slotted in places that I wouldn't think you would put a, a valuable card like that. Like, how is this happening? Yeah, I, this is one of those weird, like, I understand how it happened, but, like, these are really expensive products that you right. might want to spend a few more seconds making an envelope that you tape to the side or something. These were right. delayed, right? Yeah, and these were delayed. It took a while to get there. It's just uh, it's just uncomfortable it and unfortunate. It feel a little slapdash. I yeah. feel like they could have done something else here, but, Yeah, you know, could have done a thing. Yeah. Um, oh my God! We didn't even speak of the uh, the Yargle secret layer, did we? <laughs> no, we didn't. There's Yargle, a Yargle's very coming cool. to Bargle. Yeah, yeah. Swords the Yargle, Yargle day. Shares. Yeah, Yargle <laughs> day. Um, I, I I was gonna. I have one of the punchlines has mention of it. Oh. But yes, we can. Oh, talk good. Well, I, I was hoping we were going to mention it at some point. It's cool. It's um, cool. It's cool. There's, yeah. but yeah, we got a bunch of classic Yargle featured arts on like yes. swords to plowshares opt anger of the gods explore and... yeah there's a bunch of weird <laughs> stuff i'll bring it up here on the I'm screen excited so about the walking about dead it. secret layer like you yes, that's, that's that's a lot of people don't like that either because they're like i don't like you mixing this stuff with that stuff and i'm like well Good, i don't really? work for us I don't, why doesn't really bother me any but whatever yeah what's wrong a with that? anyway happy yargle day is going to go on sale in about 12 hours from the time we're recording this and it does have these kind of odd versions of swords to plowshares. I mm -hmm. think they're cool looking. So yeah, weird. Right? Yeah, they are cool, 
but they're also just like photoshopped on top of the yeah. existing art. No, the the like, Yargle art is very. <laughs> the, the explore art is like not photoshopped on, but it's really <laughs> it's similar. Yeah, than the last. I mean, one. the backgrounds are very much the same, but yeah. Right. It's fine. All I know is it's another secret layer. I wanted to make sure we mentioned it. Yeah. It's 30 bucks. It'll be 40 before it's over after shipping and taxes or whatever. This is a good old fashioned throw in your closet. I don't really like this I mean, one all personally. Of them are. Yeah. But you can also choose between regular and foil, which is another thing, which is cool. But again, I don't know. I don't expect to see for the high memes? sales out of this. And for the yeah. memes, maybe. Like, mm, I don't know. So, what's in the Walking Dead one? They don't so know far yet. We've They've only, only seen a zombie token. token, I believe. Yeah, uh, and the zombie token was pretty dope. Yeah, yeah the zombie, zombie token had the yeah. the girl who had half her body missing, yep, 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 called yep, yep, yep. bicycle girl or something. I mean, um, that's cool. I mean, I didn't watch the show that much, so I'm sure it's terrific. I um, kind of flitted through it, through it through the years, but I mean, you had the it zombies, right? So right. okay, all right. So we can't we can't get out this week without talking about the shoes. This was all so right? random. This was this, really weird. So there's a young this, man who goes by the name of Depsy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and he tweeted, I, I woke up one morning and he was just tweeting about these these sneakers. Um, and he, he three in the morning, he tweeted this. So I woke up to this random tweet from this young man uh, talking about a partnership between K-Swiss, K-Swiss Shoes um, and Magic the Gathering, these Jace-themed shoes that have, um, you know, the Jace flourishes on the side of the shoes, on the box. Yeah. You see Jace's face looking at you, which is the hood, you know, Jace yeah. having the hood. It's cool. Like, you look these at the design nice. of the shoe. Um, the problem is there were only 300 of these available that's um, insane and so the website sold out within minutes um and Two, obviously to be exact yeah Two um minutes. and so everybody went to ebay then i've seen some on sale for as high as 500 dollars mm. um you know i don't know who's able to really enjoy these you know with that yeah. scarcity but they look cool um it just seems again kind of random like yeah. look man there is a like I was watching Daily MTG, all right? And when Wizards is sitting there going like, you should tell us if you want us to do more stuff like this. Dude, it sold out in seconds. Yeah. It sold out in literal, we could not tell you with more dollars, you wouldn't take them all. Yeah. We couldn't pre-order them. Right. Why in the hell would you not take pre-orders to demand? Because the sneaker market's weird. The sneaker market's oh, There's a similar. weird, like, Ooh. sneaker, yeah. yeah. Sneaker heads are, 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 are an interesting Breed faction of their own. Sneaker yeah. heads are insane, and they love that stuff. So, like, 300 of anything with magic stamped on it that has Jace's face on it that's part of a very collectible market? You made 300 of those? Are you serious? Yeah. They they screwed the pooch. Whatever euphemism you want to use for how bad they messed it up, they com- colossally screwed up the well, J. Well, you're shoe. thinking about I, it all wrong, though. This is this is. I mean, I, I disagree. I think this they was a make huge success. Enough, this is exactly what they wanted. Like this uh, isn't. I don't, yeah. yeah. No, the sitting around is asking us. Yeah. You should tell us you want to make more shoes, dude. You we couldn't sell them fast enough. I was typing in the URL as That's it a went feature. on the That's screen. That's not a bug. They right. were gone. Completely were gone. gone. You mean to tell me you were going to wear those? No, I was going to buy them because now they're worth 500 bucks, ain't they? I didn't give a damn what closet. size they were. See, I, I don't buy like Buy one, that. buy, I, I throw in closet. That, that, no, buy car I, later. No, I, no. I think if you, yes. I, that, that bums me out, though. I think it's, it should be Why? for people who are genuinely going to wear them. Like, uh, You think those sneakerheads are wearing those shoes? Come on now. They own their Air Jordans walking down the street, are they? Really? Those, walking down the street in their Air Force Ones? No. Like, I seriously, so. I don't think they are, are they? I don't know that no, market. I don't know they're that not. culture. It they're seems like it's them, a com- They're keeping them in a hyperbolic chamber. Right. They're super minty fresh and never yeah. touched on ever in one of They've got their humidor set to 72 degrees exactly. And no one is ever going to wear these shoes. Ever. Oh, yeah. Like Some people will. Maybe. These a couple. shoes people will wear. So Only Sith like, deal in absolutes. The, the, but I don't think anyone's going to be running around in Jace's. J shoes, you know, like the, the Shack hypnotics, like the 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 you know the hundred thousand dollar pairs of shoes. Pharmacist Judge would was going to wear his. Yeah, a three hundred dollar pair of shoes. People will wear. Women do if, that all the time. Women spend money on high yeah. heel shoes, and we wear Agreed. them. Like that's right. what we do. But like there's also a, a level nice, of collectability and conditioning. I've got a nice and blah, blah, blah. pair of goat leather tabbies coming in. Yeah. Uh, what are tabbies? tabbies? I have no idea. Are like the split toe shoes that are Japanese style. Yeah. Huh. Nice. Well, those are neat. Well, all I know is they could have made three thousand of these and they will sold out just as fast. Maybe give. Yeah. Maybe you would have given them five more minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But whatever. Like it was they just. They should have made more Jace up lace ups. Uh, we couldn't. <laughs> 
like, I, it just, Wizards, seriously, if you don't take this as success, I don't know what to tell you. It, it's yeah. ridiculous. They make do more of these. Do the Chandra shoe. Let's go through all the make freaking Gatewatch. Has- Screw that. Yeah. Give us some uh, milling out of boots. Beans. Like, give there us some six-inch heels. Yes. Yeah, yeah, sure. Let's get some heels. Come on. All right. And make more of them, for God's sake. Yep. That's ridiculous. I did enjoy seeing all the Jace puns, though. People that are like, we get to kick Jace. Don't forget to tie your Jaces. Yeah, all yeah. that effort and time into 300 pairs. Are you kidding me? I cannot believe it. It's ridiculous. Anyway, all right. Uh, let's go ahead and turn the corner here to the finisher. A couple days ago, Wizards of the Coast and WizKids announced the single most specialized product we've <laughs> ever seen. A $1,200 Five foot, six inch tall foam Chandra. Someone's gonna buy this. <laughs> Quote Whether keeping watch over Friday Night Magic or a draft at your kitchen table. Oh, this is so disturbing. Chandra is a transcendent collector's piece for passionate magic fans. Hashtag transcendent mafia. Now, I'm not saying, but I'm just saying. <laughs> And what I'm saying is that this is a joke topic if I've ever heard of one. So tell me, if you were to fork over a cool thou for a life-size magic theme conversation piece to live at Evan your... Evan Chat wants to picture your... Kitchen table? What? They want to see this. Where's the picture? The picture of... Oh, oh of the, the 12... Good. Oh, yeah. Let me, let me bring it up here for you because it is, it is something. I want you guys to see what's going on here. Uh, and for those who listen to the podcast, obviously, sorry. Um, oh but the, a twelve hundred dollar foam statue, like who at WizKids was like, you know what the world needs? <laughs> you know what would really tie the world together right now? Minor assembly required. Image oh. not final. <laughs> oh yeah, you're gonna get a head. You're gonna get a torso, an arm probably. You know, you're gonna get a stick them in there wherever they need to go. And okay, well, that's what it looks like. <sighs> All right, Mo- moving on here. Um, where was I? Okay. If you were if you were to fork over a cool thou for the conversation piece to live at your kitchen table, what subject would you most be interested in, Ruben? I, I'm just upset. There are some beloved figures in Magic I could see living in my house. Fibble Thip. Mm-hmm. Slimefoot and my one and only true love, Jaya. Mm-hmm. But if it's going to be life size, I kind of want to go all out. So I'd like a 30 foot tall, one and a half ton Yargle. Nice. Now that's a foam figure. I'd like to have out in my front Yargle. Very nice, very nice. Aaron? Well, I have a type and I have a space cut out for him too. So I want a life size one to one Garrick Wildspeaker. But as we know, that figure would not be made of foam. It will be made of 100% USDA prime beef. Just, yeah. Rawr. Just get you. Right, yeah. Well, look, as the head honcho, Big Kahuna, head lich in charge of Cool Stuff Inc.'s advertising slash marketing department, I know exactly what figure I want in the front window. A Johnny Goldmane. Because Jace is cool and Chandra's heating up, but nothing brings in the fans quite like cute cats. Oh, that's right. That's true. Team cats. Get those true. toe beans in the window. <laughs> nice. Toe beans. And that ends another live episode of Magic Mike's. Thanks for joining us here to discuss all things magic. Thank you, Aaron. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Ruben. We've got some cores in this house. <laughs> we certainly I do. I said that. She Taking my bits. Dropped he wouldn't. Yeah, he wouldn't listen. He's take your bits no, and run. I'm just trying to. I'm Look, just trying to echo we, you. You know, we moved I'm trying here to, to be Ruby the Stallion. Uh, I'm not your intern, Ruben. Morty. <laughs> Am I the Kardashian? What's happening here? <laughs> and we move to our final slide. I want to thank our sponsor, CoolStuffInc.com, our co-sponsor, CardHoarder.com, my co-hosts, Aaron Campbell and Ruben Bressler. You guys for watching and listening. I hope you support us at Patreon.com slash Magic Mics. Please follow, like, tweet, favorite, share, subscribe to everything social that tells people we exist. Catch us online on our Discord, Twitch.tv at Magic Mics, on Twitter at Magic Mics Cast, our Magic Mics subreddit, and like the Magic Mics page on Facebook. Talk to us privately at Magic Mics Podcast at gmail.com. Follow the audio-only podcast at Magic Mics Podcast or find us on iTunes, or join us here next week. Same time, same place, for another episode of Magic Mics. Good night, everybody.